Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is episode 17. Last time we made it to the Coral Prison and we've uh, gotten to the point where we're able to enter a Chocobo race so we can earn Gus a lot of gill and proceed with the story. However, some discoveries have made themselves known to us. So we've got a lot of stuff to check out here before we move on. We're going to play some Queen's Blood. We're going to check out these discoveries for some vegetables. <laughs> and then we'll be able to move on. Things that you don't want to miss. So let's look into the discoveries first. Um, it's above us. Oh, there we go. He looks promising. You got it. Just straight ahead. What? Okay. Got a problem? Oh, am I holding you up? The weird, suspicious group. You okay. Or something. <laughs> Allow us to show you how things work around here. Okay. Oh no, I've been lured into a spot. Oh, am I holding you up? What? Oh, okay. Are, you, are we okay? We're still walking. Okay. I ain't gonna hurt. We're still walking here. Promise. I'm just gonna loot this box. Where do you think you're? I'm getting money. Nothing interesting over there. Uh huh. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> Not far now. Oh no. An area where we'll probably engage in a fight. Oh no. And I've got a giant sword. These guys sure know how to pick a and fight. Here we are. <laughs> Now we can have a nice private talk without anyone butting in. <laughs> <laughs> it's time you got a lesson in the way things work around here. Don't worry, you can thank us later. <laughs> yeah! Can I just say that the confidence level, the absolute sheer confidence that people in this world have to approach a man with a giant sword on his back and say, you know what? We can take him. It's uh, it's impressive. We are I mean, like points for trying, I guess, but like. You're getting juggled, sir. So long. <laughs> How'd that? Are you feeling okay, guys? How's your head? You know, you could have just told us you were out of our league. I mean, uh, thanks for the match. It was a real learning experience. Wasn't it, boys? Uh, oh, great! We got something special for you. A gift to remember us by. Here! And with that, we'll hurry up and get out of your hair. Right, boys? Yeah. Very sorry to have troubled you, but we won't do it again! Promise! They fucking, like, run. Stalkers. Okay. Um, yes, a very good fight. You really made me sweat there for a second. <clears throat> okay, and now we're back. So these discoveries are short and sweet. Let's head into this area. Bail Jumper. Welcome to Bail Jumper, watering hole for the dregs of the Dust Bowl. Heard you're in the market for some greens. Maybe. If so, I've got a garden up on the cliff. Everything's yours for the taking. Assuming there's anything to take, I've intended to in ages. Here, go see for yourself. Be sure to keep an eye out for fiends, though. The place is crawling with them. Cliffside Key. Okay, this would be... Here. Hey there, buddy. What's going on here? Oh, they're doing an auction. This and moan some more, why don't you? What us. This hurt. Pocket off one thousand bills. Fifteen hundred. 
Clock. It's a giant clock. 4K. I know that now you both got. Look at all that trash up there. I love how they're buying shit here. It's like it's the least practical use of items in a coral prison ever. 25k for a grandfather clock. That'll do you good up here. Seeing the effect of the gravity spell. So cool. It'll always be Demi to me. Oh. Oh, of course. You're gonna steal my green, you Cactua menace. Chase after the Cactua. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. How did I know that was gonna be a fall? Come on. Come on! I was about to give chase. All right, so we got grappling to do. Do we get to fight the Cactua? Calling ice. It's on oh, it's almost a double pressure. Yes, double pressure. It is never in doubt. Why does it sound like a monkey? We won't hold that. No, oh, it's the one with the Okay, so we gotta get its barrier down first. Gets the pressure right as it's about to die. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. Why do you sound like that? What the fuck? I at least appreciate that it's uh, it's very snappy with how the grappling and dropping onto things works. I can appreciate that. Ooh, okay. Won't take long. So long. 
Let's do this. Gotcha. You're done. Nothing to it. Dude, the death claws look so perfect. I've already said that. They look perfect. I love how they nailed that design so hard. God, there's so many cool designs all across the earlier Final Fantasy games. Even though I'm sure that there's plenty in the ones that I haven't played as well. But like, I just think of the ones that I have played and I'm like, God damn it. I want to see Final Fantasy VIII monsters remade so badly. You have more material. Poison? Get back here, you green thing! Oh, look. We're going in. Yeah, it is cacti. We're going to its den. Oh, Cloud can run across that. Come on, Cloud, I believe in you. You could have sprinted that. Where's the wall running ability when you need it? Is there gonna be more? There, yeah. We're in the, the actual lair. Look at them! <laughs> Do I get to fight all of them? Please. Yes! <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's get the assess off. I got you. 3,000 needles is coming my way. Botanical fiends of the succulent variety, mainly found in arid regions. Almost faster than the eye can see, these silly-faced speedsters flit about the sands, leaving only a flash of green in their wake. Hitting them with physical ATB commands will pressure them, though typically too fast to strike. They will be susceptible to attacks when pressured or while using abilities of their own. Like 3,000 needles. Oh, God. Hail of needles. Okay. This is going to be a problem for me. For sure. I can dead. Reprieve activated. Oh. Reprieve activated, but because I'm still in the process of that taking damage, it knocks you off reprieve straight away. So that confirms that Reprieve doesn't give you a little brief period of like invincibility to recover. Like if you're getting hit by a continuous attack, Reprieve will not work properly. You'll come back to life and die immediately. That's a bit unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> I have to assess them again, you know. I gotta do it to get the assessment. I'll try and do it when there's like one left or something. But how the hell am I avoiding these? Like, Game over, huh? Yep. That's it. That sounds easy. All right, just avoid the hail fire of needles, dude. It's simple. Just avoid it. Simply do not get hit. When it rains hellfire upon you, simply do not get hit. There's a stagger, so we got some out of here. Just gotta separate them. No! That was the last one. I swear that there was one more left. No! I didn't get the assess off that time. I swear there was another one left. That's right, that won't be the only cactua we face. I'll assess them later. Well, alright then. We just have to find more cactua dens out in the wild. Very good.
money, baby. I'll make sure I've got everything before we go down. Because otherwise I have to go through that whole thing all over again. Okay, and now we've got a discovery over here. This is the peculiar card players one, so I guess we've got to do... We'll talk to him. Because we've already spoken to him already, but... We'll speak to him again now that the discovery's popped up. Only cards of the highest quality, guaranteed. Browse as long as you like. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's just defeating the card players. It's time. So these guys are level yeah, six. Why is everyone avoiding me like the plug? What's up? What are you? Dax. Oh, Dax, I did it again. I'm sorry, old habits. No harm, men. Please don't go. I'm begging you. I only want to play a game of Queen's Blood. I promise, that's all. I have a hard time talking to people, and, well, I know I'm not the friendliest looking guy, so I can't convince anyone to go around. Anyway, uh, the name's Dax. You, uh, wanna play with me? Pretty please? Oh, there we go. So this is the, just one dude that I need to beat in a rise of rank. It's weird, though, because, like, they're showing as level 6, so I thought I would have to be level 6 to play them. But I suppose not. Because I think that meditating floating guy in North Corel was level 5. We'll rise a rank at the very least. Replacement cards. You now own a replacement card, which can only be placed on top of an ally card already on the board. They have two major benefits. They do not require a rank to be placed, and they can trigger cards whose abilities only activate when destroyed. That's cool. Some even have abilities that absorb the destroyed card's power. Replacement cards are strong enough to turn the tide of battle if used correctly. Now, I have a lot of new cards that we've picked up, so let's take a look. Um, a lot of new cards. So we've got the Spearhawk, the Sandhog Pie, when destroyed, raise the power of allied cards affected by three. We could make like a full on deck that's just based on destroying cards like Tonberry King, Sandhog Pie, Midgard Sorma. When destroyed, lower the power of allied and enemy cards by four. So you could even use this one to specifically lower your own card, powering up Tonberry King and Midgard Sorma again. If you win the lay and a score bonus of three for Bosch Chocobo. Loveless. When played, raise the power on affected tiles by one. So there you go. Uh, the Haunted Hotel raises the power of allied cards on affected tiles by two. Damn, that's great to put in the back there. Space Ranger, raise power by one for each enhanced enemy card. Um, the Shoal Pod, raise the power of allied cards by four. Lower the power by two. There's Tomberry King. When played, just straight up destroy the card in front of you. Bomb is crazy. Sand Spitter. Lower the power by one. Chimera raises power by two for each enfeebled enemy card. Saucer Squad. Makes use of its adorable nature to enliven the battlefield. That's a good amount of power-ups, actually. Chocobo Jockey, when you win the lane, a score bonus of ten. Okay, score bonus of 10 is good. I kind of want to put a, a Freet on my field too. So that's a three star one. When this when enemy cards are destroyed, raise by two and raise power by two for each other enhanced allied card, which is crazy to go against the Tonberry King Midgard Sorma combo. Dio raises power by one for each other enhanced card. Crownhorn destroys an allied card and replaces it. So that's our replacement one. All right, I'm going to I'm going to mess around with my deck here and make something new. All right, we're going to test out to see if this type of deck works. I probably should have just made a brand new deck cuz I think you can have multiple, but we're going for the destroy cards to power up other cards routine and we'll see how that works. Okay, 
It begins. Okay, so we want to put Tonberry King down early. And then we can, when cards are destroyed, wipe them out. We'll see if we're even able to get this off. This will be really in interesting. We can play Midgard Sorma. Problem is we're not making much headway here. So if I could do this, oh, I won't be able to actually kill that one. Hmm. And then I can do replacement cards as well. No, oh, well, okay. That kind of ruins that. Well, I'll destroy this card. And that will power up those. Unfortunately, I think we're still going to lose because, yeah, they've got that whole bottom row. God, and then they just took away that last one from me. Oh, this is just a trial run of a brand new deck, so it's going to be interesting to see if I can make it work because I need to do good combinations to feed into everything. Um, all right, let's try this hand. Let's go with that. Do that. Oh, you asshole. God damn. These Crypt Shades aren't really going to work as much as I want them to. It's kind of interesting because I, I, I'm going to win, but I wasn't able to really get what I wanted out of this deck. Yeah, I won without being able to really get what I wanted. <laughs> I didn't end up destroying anything. I just won in the numbers game, which is uh, a little sad. That's right, I will tweak the deck and I'll try and figure out how to get this to work. The Cripshe can only really take out weaker cards, get those just like destruction things off. The bomb is a good idea. That's all right. A work in progress. <laughs> that was even more fun than I'd imagined! I've been missing out. Prison is a great place to look at us you know? So I Blood night. And, pop and yelling at anyone who looked at me funny. Kept me safe, but it also made good, decent people like you avoid me altogether. Even though I just wanted to play cards. I got so frustrated that no one would give me the time of day that I started to resent the judgy bastard. <laughs> but I've got to change myself first if I want people to talk to me. Because you had the courage to approach me when no one else did. I know that now. So I'm going to do it like you and ask people to play instead of waiting for them to come to me. Character development for Dax. Well done. Oh, God. Congratulations, Cloud. You've attained the rank of Bloodlight. And I have obtained intel on a new opponent for you. There is someone by the name of Navalan in North Corel. I knew that because I already met him, Chadley. Thank you. I didn't need you to tell me that. I already saw the guy. But thank you. Want to know my secret? Huh? May I help you? 
I'm in the middle of a performance. Are you? Here to play Queen's Blood? That's going to be tricky. I'm a living statue, you see. I'm not supposed to move under any circumstances. <sighs> well, I guess I could move my arms at least. Oh no, the illusion, it's broken. You're going to regret making me come to life. <laughs> okay, sure. So promoted to level six, we need to defeat Keeper of the Crewer. So we get the Joker card. Ah, oh, that's a cool enemy in the original too. When allied and enemy cards are destroyed, raise this card's power by one. So another one that ties into the deck that I'm trying to build. All right, well, instead of a deck that relies on destroying cards to get buffs, what about a deck that relies on buffing cards to get buffs? Let's try that move instead. Oh, this is a risky first hand. Let's try and keep a free. See how much of a mistake that's gonna be. Chocobo Jockey gets a plus 10 if we win the lane, so that could be very nice and situational. if I win the lane if I put Chocobo here it's a 10 so they would have to put down enough to match that could get a plus 10 for the win this is the last move that I can make because they're definitely gonna overtake that next pawn we're gonna throw it down it could potentially be a plus 10 we'll see okay and now we wait Loveless powering up everything. There's a lot of buffs here. Damn, we're going to win that bottom lane then. Amazing. We'll get a plus 10. Yeah. Okay. Chocobo Jockey paid off. Play your last pathetic card, Pietro. Okay, well, um, I still win. So screw you, game. But I missed out my plus 10 bonus. But that's fine, we win. You try. Uh, this deck is good. That's nice. All right, buff to buff. That a free power up is good. And if you can get Loveless in the middle of a whole bunch of cards, very nice indeed. I'll need to work on the killing cards to power up cards deck. Joker can potentially You're work in that. Completely demolished. Well played, good sir. But my performance wasn't half bad. Wouldn't you agree? Someday, I hope to join the Gold Saucer's grand stable of performers. That's why I'm trying to hone my skills by purposely putting myself in the harshest of environments. But. My winning streak was starting to draw negative attention, so maybe losing was for the best. I'll be here for a while yet. If you would like to play another game, just let me know. The student was actually put in prison for being a nuisance. He's lying. What? Hmm? 
Mary. Oh, where have you been, handsome? I take it you're here to join me for a drink? Jesus. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? Ugh. You big party pooper. Fine, be that way. Guess we'll play Queen's Blood instead. <laughs> oh no, don't even try to wiggle out of it. Because I'm Mary, darling dear. And when I've knocked a few back, nobody slips through my fingers. So, either you take a drink, or we play a game. Your choice. Mary, the type of gal to slip something into a drink. God damn. Death Claw. When enemy cards are destroyed, raise the card's power by one. Nice. Let's keep going. The buff to buff deck. Double buff. Chuck that in the back like so. Yeah. Oh, you. Anytime I'm like, don't take that card, I'm like, I know that they're gonna do it. I want the card, the player to put their card there, but knowing them, they're gonna put it there and take over this spot anyway. Because that would be perfect for the Chocobo Jockey. Yeah. That was to be expected. I can at least go for a full power-up of the board with Loveless. Eight. Okay, I can power that up even more. Hmm. Okay. I still won. Yeah, nice. So there's like the situation that even though you like buff cards and you take some losses, your cards end up being more powerful in the back row. We found a good one. And then it has potential to go off even more when you've actually got Efreet on the field. And there's Deathclaw. Well, shit. You got me good, hot stuff. Should have had more to drink. I have a confession to make. You see, my dear, even though it's my surefire ticket to victory, I've kind of been cutting back on the booze. Do you want to know why? A while back, I drank way too much, blacked out in the middle of a match, and had an awful nightmare. That's such a surprise. This creepy stranger was trying to chat me up, which is why this match totally doesn't count. I am still off my game. Next time, you better bet I'm going to be sauced to the max. So watch out, boyo. Sauced to the max. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, yep. Cutting back on the drinks, huh? I, cut this medication. I beat him. And there's the man of the hour. Thanks to your efforts. Demand for Queen's Blood is back and stronger than ever. It's at an all-time high. Which means my profits should be too. You did me a great favor. Take this as a token of my thanks. Before you go, though, I have some cards I'd highly recommend for a player as skilled as yourself. You won't want to miss out. New cards? No! People you're, lose interest when they you're start a con artist. they can't win. That's why. By the way, don't breathe a word about this to the folks upstairs. Unless huh. you want to find yourself behind bars again. All right, brother. Uh, nice. We now have the three vegetables to get new stuff. So instead of the feathers this time, it's more greens. Where are the guys around here that follow me around all the time and harass me and then the other guys that don't tell the truth? And you have to talk to them a bunch. Hey, nice fun. 
mind, Merc. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yo, relax. What are you doing showing me G stuff already? Okay. A bit early to be showing off this kind of stuff, but all right, whoa, whoa. I'll get it. The G. What are they? What's the ancient G? No idea. One of my most anticipated sections of the game, maybe. Well, that's pretty that's sick. All I got. Now go and kick the tar out of those other jockeys. I think it's cool that your Jesus does demonic. It's cool that uh, the different chocobos are saved with different gear as well. Hell yeah, we're riding into battle with this one. And being able to edit the colors is also a really nice touch. I think that's awesome. Pico's going to war today on the racetrack. Jesus. So what's this for then? This is still for the golden plumes. Okay, you can get the rodeo. Uh, the rodeo one. That's kind of fun. The poncho. No, I said rodeo. Yeah. You know, <laughs> rodeo. So, you ready or what? All right, let's participate in the race. About time. Let's get this show on the road. Come with me. Actually, on second thought, I'll take him up top. That work for you? Say what? <laughs> Fine. You want to go roll in the hay with this idiot? Go wild. And on that note, follow me. All right, off we go. It's hard to believe this is the same Pico that nearly died in the desert. You should have seen him that first day, the poor boy. More dirt than Chocobo. Couldn't so much as give us a quail without coughing up sand. He's a whole new bird now, though. Might even have what it takes to win. Question is, do you? Even the fastest Chocobos can't win Jack without the right jockey. I've seen my fair share of promising birds wasted on riders who didn't know their asses from a hole in the ground. Believe me, in the racing world, it's all about who's holding the reins. No pressure, though. Okay, on you go. Time to race. All right, Pico's going in. And we didn't have to show Mr. Coates Dian's medallion this time. It's uh, in a different sequence of events now. Competing in the race today? Yep. We'll get your bird prepped for you. <laughs> Just sit tight in the jockey lounge. And no one All right. off, okay? Come on, Chocobo Sam's gonna be here this time, right? They're teasing us with Chocobo Sam for some reason. Madame M and Andre have shown up multiple times. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a bird. Yo! I love seeing all the different colors. Nice. I'm wondering if the ones that we're looking at here in the Shinra uniform, because this is the mountain chocobo, and I don't think we've seen these ones yet, but I wonder if they're from familiar ranches, like this is the Junon one. I can't wait to wrangle some other chocobo colors. Originally, this is where you get the Ramu summon materia for the first time. And it's missable. <laughs> A bug boy? Hmm? <laughs> hey there, Joe. Why, Esther, you grow lovelier by the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh, sure I do. Oh, where are my manners? 
This here's Joe. He's one of Sam's jockeys. <laughs> and as much as it pains me to admit it, the man's far and away the best rider in the sport. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. This is Cloud, an up-and-coming star of the track. And all ours. Be sure to wave hi when he laps you. <laughs> well, sounds like you got a fan, son. I wonder, though, you win her over with your skills or with one of them smoldering looks? <laughs> Don't see why it can't be both. About time I had some competition, assuming Esther's not full of it. For both our sakes, I hope she isn't. <sighs> Forget him. The race is starting soon, so stay focused. Speaking of, you might want to consider practicing. The sim here can help with that. Nice. Um, and as in a similar vein with the Ramu materia being collectible here and missing it, same can be said for getting the Ifrit materia, which was actually on the originally on the ship over to Costa del Sol. It's really interesting to see how freely summons are given in the remakes. We have so many summons. Well, try not to get trampled out there. Damn, no Chocobo Sam, but they turned Joe into one of Sam's jockeys, which is really cool. I'm just brushing up on my bird calls before the race. Okay, all this food is going to make me really hungry. I will beat Joe. I will be famous. I will beat Joe. Yes, that's good. Repeat your affirmations and you will succeed. Aw, a bug boy. I'll go easy on ya. Not going to do a few laps for practice? Nah, we'll practice, because we got it. This being your first race and all, you should probably do a few laps in the sim. Alright, let's do our first race. Practice, of course. If you want to brush up on your jockey skills, you can practice on the racing sim, even if you have never raced a day in your life. Competing, completing the sim's various tutorial objectives will ensure you are ready to compete. So you speed up, slow down, and back up, and we got the drift. Okay, so different controls here. X, right when the countdown hits zero to begin the race with an explosive start. Okay, we get the Mario Kart start. You may end the simulation at any time by pressing start. No stamina glitch this time, like the original guys. <laughs> Hold L1 and R1, you'll be, and recharge your stamina infinitely. All right, let's practice the race. R2 to drift, we got it. Okay. Oh god, it's weird because now there's different controls. Speed balloons. The more of these blue balloons you collect, the faster your chocobo will run. Each balloon raises the speed level by one for a maximum of ten. Note when you run into obstacles or collide with other chocobos, your speed level will decrease. Oh god, I, yeah, I'm holding down the ro That's... that's weird. It's a little bit counterintuitive for them to change the... controls. Ability balloons. Collecting these red balloons will fill your chocobo's ability gauge. Once your gauge is full, press L1 to activate your chocobo ability. Each type of chocobo has its own unique one. So we get speed burst. And dash balloons. Collecting yellow balloons will add a charge to your dash gauge. As long as you have at least one, you can press R1 for a short burst of speed. You only stock as many charges as there are in your dash gauge, so use them when you can. Okay. And this is where we want to drift. Oh god. Finish a lap in under 30 seconds, okay. Oh, dude. <laughs> 309. Keep going on that speed boost. Our speed's at 10. We should get it this the third lap. Ooh. 
Jesus. Oh, 29.59. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now you've completed the tour and learned the ropes. You can race in the Chicken Boat Cup. All right. It's time. Time to race and to crush my enemies. Hyperion is Joe's bird, and it's a fast and rugged son of a bitch. Things for Red to win. Hyperion. All participating jockeys, please proceed to the paddock. You good to go? Yep, it's time. Shall we win first try? Oh, hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Each bird is unique, but they all possess following attributes. Speed, acceleration, weight, cornering, strength, and intelligence. Depending on the distribution of these attributes, a bird can be faster or easier to handle. For more in-depth breakdown, speed and acceleration will obviously make chocobos run faster. More weight will make them fly shorter distances, but also be harder to knock around. Cornering helps chocobos turn better, strength keeps them from slipping around, and intelligence affects the potency of their ability. A chocobo can wear gear on three different parts of their body, the head, torso, and legs. Each piece of gear has its own set of attributes. God damn. Okay. In addition, gear comes with a unique skill that activates automatically when you meet its conditions. You can save up to four sets of gear, three racing sets, and one world set, which is the gear your bird will wear while it shuttles you around the world. Damn. Okay. So you can actually see... Comeback Kid, Damage Control, Dash Sooner. Dramatically increase all attributes if placed seventh or lower heading into the final lap. Oh, so you want to use that to your advantage. Wow, okay. So you can see the base stats and then where they go up to. Slightly increase the speed for a few seconds after being passed. Randomly replace your current ability with a different one. Increase speed, just general speed increase. Increase acceleration. Increase weight. Okay, and each one is different. This is wild. Increase the efficacy of items picked up. Increase speed proportionate to distance from the first place chocobo during the last lap. So another one like that. So you could have Comeback Kid and Late Bloomer stack on top of each other if you were being lost. Increase chance of dashing out the gate and increase speed on success. Increase number of dash charges. Gain a dash charge upon entering the final lap, unless your charges are full. Lessen how much you're damaged. You slow down. Start races with one dash already available. Increase speed after recovering from going out of bounds or crashing. Effective dash panels. Dash speed. Slow down. Is lessened. Start race. Okay, I'm going to start race with a dash. I'm going to increase speed. And... Hmm. Some of these are wild though. Alright, we're gonna do Merc Cap. I'm just looking at the stat increases that we can go for here. Okay, start with a dash ready available, increase number of dash by one, and then. Increase speed when being passed. So we're gonna have a lot of acceleration and cornering. I like that you can have multiple. That's fun. We'll go with this one for now. Determination. Let's see how we do. GSN, the gold source of news. We're going to be on TV, which is great for our image of being on a wanted poster. The Chocobo Cup! I love the showmanship of this. Oh, Hyperion looks cool. Hmm. Hmm. Here's a secret. I survived that recent shooting. <sighs> You're not talking about the Coliseum, are you? Yes, I was there. 
or I would have been had I not gone to the bathroom just before. That's amazing. You're so lucky. Aren't I just? <laughs> Which is why I know my bird's a winner. <laughs> Ooh, what a scrumptious looking parfait. And with plenty of butterscotch, I see. Bottoms up. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Dude, Palmer is so funny. Got eyes on him. Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Do you know how hot it is out here? <laughs> God, what asshole decided our uniforms had to be black? I'll be there as soon as I can. You freaking better. And bring something cold to drink. Or better yet, ice cream. Is vanilla no, okay? vanilla. <laughs> I'm getting heat stroke over here. I'm gonna die. You want that? Do ya? Hangs up. Oh my god, this is so perfect. He misses Reno. Wish you were here, partner. Yeah, he <laughs> did. <laughs> you can just tell. That's so funny. All the expansion that we've seen to the Turks and Shinra has been top tier. That's great. I'm so excited to see Reno again. Oh, I forgot to... Oh, I was holding R2 as well, because the... the, the fucking, ah! Old controls. Alright, I'm gonna do this. I'm in seventh place. Maybe I needed those... Uh, that ability after all. Ah! I'm still in it. Just shy of my speed burst. Oh god. Don't do that. We're in sixth place. How many laps do we have? Three. Come here. Alright. See how we go. Okay, you assholes, you're bumping into me, all right? I'm not bumping into you, you understand? Oh my God, why is, dude, he's so far ahead. Let's get this asshole. Come back here. Oh God, no, that was, that was so aggressive, that drift. Catching up to him. Bonk. Get bumped. Right. Oh, no. Yeah, that's right. That's what I call a winner, baby. That's what I call a goddamn winner. We do that first try out here. Oh, nice. <laughs> Just like, slaps him in the face. <laughs> Look, our group's free. They're not, they're not watching from a jail cell. A quick and decisive victory. I knew I backed a winner. 
You're the real deal, kiddo. I just provided the encouragement. And thanks to you, my prison's gonna be a goddamn palace. Good for you. Ooh, so frosty. But here in the desert, we like it hot, fiery, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Now where's our guy? <laughs> Easy, Snowflake. Solemn Gus is a man of his word. Are you scared I'll break my promise? <laughs> yeah, it was this place. There you go. That tunnel over there will take you where you need to go. Past all that quicksand like a slippery little sidewinder. And at the other end, one of my beautiful vultures will be waiting to guide you through the desert. So be a good tourist. We got old Shooty McShooterson tied up nice and tight in a shack out in the scrapyard. But now he's all yours. Turn him over. Give him his just desserts. It's your call to make. Okay. Thanks to you, we made a killing out there. Woo! They really took a random guy named Mr. Coates that you see for like two scenes and gave him a whole ass thing. And I love it. All right, you you be safe. You get home, will ya? You guys moving on then? And what are you gonna do? Since you put Pico's name on the map, we'll stick around for a bit. Try and get a winning streak going. Besides, we still got a score to settle. Sure you'll be okay on your own? No man with a bird is ever truly alone. Hey, Cloud, I know you need to hit the road, but if you're ever itching to get back in the saddle, come around. Pico will be here. No, we'd love a victory lap. Okay, so we got Pico that we can do more races with. Don't suppose you're in the market for a charming young racing consultant. <laughs> Quite charming indeed. Okay, so we've done everything out here. We can we can move on with our lives. Look at our small little cat boy. All right, off we go. The Dust Bowl Outcast Underpass. Okay. There's no way Barrett shot those people, right? Are there any other gun-armed dudes who might have gone on a killing spree? We know him. He'd never do that. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Mm, okay. Time for us to let our characters learn the truth. Bring it. So we're locked into this party as again, I think. So it's Cloud, Tifa, and Aerith. Yeah, for this whole time. For some reason, we're not able to switch to Red and Yuffie during this time, which is kind of odd. I wonder what their reasoning for that is. You have to have Tifa and Aerith in your party ever since um, we've been able to reform the party at the Gold Saucer. We are into the wastes. There's our vulture. Damn. Okay, that's a that's a lot of mountain. Okay, so now we're in the coral region over here. And we can see the freight elevator for the North Corral gate. And we'll eventually be able to get these Remna Wave towers activated. Look at that skyline. Hmm. You see the helicopters going in and out. I like that that explains what all the helicopters were doing in the Corel uh, region earlier. Ah, 
Alright, let's follow this bird. Are we gonna go through like a, a scrapyard? Uh, like we did in the original? All the old beat up cars and stuff? I'm really curious how this is playing out on Barrett's end. Like whether he's the one who's tied up or whether he's just chilling out with Dine already. Like we're kind of in the dark on this because in the original, what happens is we're still, uh, you know, the player and the characters are all like, oh man, man with a gun arm. Did Barrett do this, you know? And you run in and you start seeing people that are also shot and killed down in the Corel prison as well. And then you see Barrett and Barrett's like, stay out of this. This is something I got to deal with, right? And we're like, what the hell? And eventually we go into a house, Barrett runs in, kills another dude, and then he actually tells us the story and we get the flashback with Dine and Shinra convincing them to move to Marco. And then they explain this thing with Dine and that Barrett's got to do this. So we actually see Barrett and then go to get Dine together because Barrett has to resolve the issues with well, from his past. So this time it's very, very different. There's our scrapyard, yeah. Cool. So Dine's living in a scrap heap, potentially. Uh -huh. Not good at all. Jesus, okay. Run! Damn it. This way! Barret? Move! Yo, okay. Let me guide you through the random twisters. <laughs> I'll be chewing on sand for weeks. <laughs> Sneeze. Thank Very God good. we found you. We were worried. You on the lamp, big guy? The hell I am! <sighs> what are you guys doing all the way out here, anyway? Looking for whoever decided to shoot up the Coliseum lobby. They said the culprit had a gun for an arm. <sighs> they did, huh? Tell me it wasn't you. Frankly, it might as well have been. Barrett, talk to us. I know the man who murdered all those people. Dine, my best friend. It was four years ago. The corral reactor had just gone up. Dine and I had been to check it out, see what the deal was. But on our way back... None of this makes any sense. That explosion could have brought down the whole mountain. So where the hell's Shinra? That's a damn good question. <sighs> Whatever. We need to get back. Tell them what we found. God, no. <laughs> Barrett! Dine! It's the mayor. It's Shinra. They just showed up and started shooting. I think they're trying to cover up what happened at the reactor. To pin the blame on. Hey! Over here! Please. This ain't happening. God damn it. The village. 
Marlene and Eleanor might still be there. Still so quick to throw in the towel, ain't you? Come on. Damn it. Do I have to do everything? <clears throat> Shinra has a reputation for safety to uphold. Which makes you liabilities. Jesus, how many bullets can those arms take? So Marlene's... I managed to get away, but I was bleeding out. Figured that was it. Until Doc Sheeran came along and saved me. Put me back together. Most of me, anyway. There was no saving my arm, so I made a call. Instead of the normal prosthetic, I chose a means to an end. Guess Stein had the same idea. I guess he did. I'd resigned myself to the fact that he was dead, but if I'd known he'd survive too, I... So that's why Dain shot all those people? To get back at Shinra? I don't know. I saw him at the saucer, saw the bodies and the bullet holes, but that's not who Dain is. Whatever his faults, he's not a monster. If I can find him, talk to him. I know we can figure this out. Well, okay! What are we waiting for? No time like the present. Okay then, and here's the scrapyard. Barrett's in, we can now choose our party again. Barrett goes more into the Corel stuff and it plays out kind of similar to the original events where Scarlet and the gang are shooting at them. Except instead of it being like you see the, the gun and the bullets slowly until it hits them in the arm and he drops dying. Barrett takes a crap ton of bullets <laughs> into his arm before he drops him. That's like a little bit surprising. He's like, oh, it's holding on. It shows like his resistance and uh, his way, it, like how strong Barrett is to still hold on to dying through a hailstorm of bullets. Um, very surprising. And um, Barrett not having any idea at all that Dine survived in the original he heard that someone got the same operation as him and he kind of thought or assumed it might have still been Dine, you know who survived but he was afraid to show his face because of all that had happened and failing to save him interesting changes Yo, new weapon for Barrett, the Vulcan Cannon, okay. Before a critical event. Are we still gonna have the 1v1? Look at that gun. Rush toward an enemy and launch them into the air with a furious blow. 
Proficiency bonus is topping up the overcharge. Okay. I suppose that I want to be um, preparing Barrett for a potential dine 1v1? Maybe? I hope that they keep that in. We'll head to our rest point up ahead and then I'll change around my gear. So Barrett's rejoined the party, so he's just been following Dine out here, and then we've gone through our own adventure. Now. I still think that that point there, where Barrett is telling us about the flashback, is the perfect opportunity to give us their little flashback um, about Shinra convincing them about Karel. I don't know why I healed. The rest point is right there. All right, prep yourselves for a boss fight. And you're sure he's here? We're sure. Sorry, but I need to do this alone. Barrett. Go. Yes! Okay, I'm so glad. I was worried because I'm like, please don't make it like a group fight against Dine. Okay. We gotta do this on a 1v1. Uh, let's uh, change our equipment around. Scrapyard prison cell. So they actually put him in a prison cell, huh? He doesn't run the place? <laughs> He's not the boss man. Okay, I see the type of arena they're going with for the fight. Lots of cover opportunities. Hello, buddy? your heart dropping by for Eleanor's birthday. What? Hell, Marlene, is that a place for Barrett? <laughs> yeah, he's looking fit as a fiddle. Huh. Good question. She ain't with him. Where's Myrna? She ought to be here. Come to think of it, I don't see a give, neither. But you ain't the kind to come empty-handed. God damn it. his kind doing here you son of a bitch still living on Shinra's kill 
No, man. It ain't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you here to help me? <laughs> He's here for you to take the load off your shoulders, right? Same old shit. Okay. We're in the dying fight. I like that they've kept the element of Eleanor being by his side. It's so sad that like to him in his brain, he's like Elle and Marlene, right? And where's Barrett's wife, Myrna? You know, and you're like, oh man, that is, that's hitting a spot. Interesting that he sees Cloud in the soldier uniform and he immediately gets it. And he's like, what? You're hanging out with Shinra. So that's the point of tension here between the two of them. This is very interesting. Both of them completely unaware of each other's survival in this version. God damn. Okay. Oh, firebombs. Oh, he's got point blank. Holy shit. Nice. I just miss. Whoa! Please. Whoa. There he goes again. Holy crap! Oh, fearless friend. Dude, the like take the load off your shoulders because he does that quote in the first part of the remake. I'm here for you. Like the fact that that's something that he's done before as well. Like that's one of his like supportive elements. The gun-armed assailant responsible for the bloodshed and the gold saucer, after losing everything he held dear, he took up the mantle of a cold-blooded executioner. Driven by an insatiable need for vengeance, he has turned his ire on the man he once called his closest friend. Inflicting enough damage will pressure him. When his HP is reduced, he will fuse with scrap metal to perform powerful attacks. During this time, he will be difficult to pressure. However, destroying a discreet part will interrupt his attacks and make him more susceptible to being staggered. Okay. I wonder if he has to reload at all. His, his attacks are cool. God, it's just a simple thing where he's like, you can't just explain. It's not like that, but he's obviously not his his correct self. He's weak against fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> the best of friends together again! <laughs> Ain't it beautiful? God, they turned him into a goddamn maniac. He's so much more crazy than he was in the original. You and me set traps, and you got caught in one. I guess old habits die hard. I just got caught in one of them. <laughs> oh, come on. I was out of the range. Okay, um... Come on out. Please. 
No. God. Oh well, I can't really do much about that. I love that this is a 1v1 and a tough fight at the same time. Very good. This ain't shit! In the Akira is this. Come on, you can do this. You can still save him. So it's said that he's gonna fuse with scrap metal, but what? How? What was growing out of his arm? I what the f like? Kill you. What the th what? Jesus! What is that? Bro's got like magnets in his gun arm that, or something? Like what? Phantom Ray. Oh my, dude, what the fuck? Okay. What in the world, dude? That's so wild. Okay. Executioner. Oh, shit. Okay. Yep. So I think I can definitely get rid of that. I just need to have stuff ready. Hidden Bob. Oh, yep. Ooh. Dude. Is he some kind of Dr. Octopus? Dude, I get it. You're crazy. Please. Oh, paralyzing wave. Cool. Dude, that's so weird. What is that? What a strange thing to add. Oh. Okay. Ow. Okay. Yep. Well, they made him tougher, that's for sure. Can I, oh, can I shoot the mines or can I lure him into them? Undying rage, Jesus Barrett. Um, can I do this? Nice. There you go. Maximum fury gets it done. Leave me, huh? I thought you wanted to help your own body. <laughs> uh, uh. 
What? No wise words? Coward. When the going gets tough, he's gone. Yeah, you're right. About everything. I should have never believed him. But that money... I thought it changed our lives. Well, it changed them all right. You know, I can hear her now. Eleanor, as clear as day, begging me to stop, give you the benefit of the doubt, saying you ain't done nothing wrong. But then who's gonna answer for what happened? Oh, I know. Shinra! Always Shinra! Oh. His eyes. Hair, too. After everything went down, I didn't know what to do. Myrna was dead. And I figured you were, too. All I had was guilt and regret, and the weight of it was too much. But Marlene gave me the strength to carry on. She nearly died that day. House was about to come down when I heard her crying. And ever since, she's been my reason to get up in the morning. You took my baby girl from me. You knew she meant the world to me. You knew, and still you took her. That's not true. You took everything from me. Everything and everyone. Dad, we could go see Marlene right now. <sighs> Look at me, Barrett. You think I want Marlene to see what her father's become? Stop! With all this goddamn blood on my hands, how could I ever hold my daughter again?
guilt. That weight. Dine. Dine. Damn, we got to see Marlene's mother for the first time. I missed you. Wow. You're gonna carry that weight, dude. Shinra coming out in full force for no reason right now. Oh my god. Can we get a break, please? We're trying to have a moment. Jesus, okay. Shinra show up at the best time when everything's very vulnerable between Barrett and Dine. Only to just interject themselves. Um, and we've got a new weapon on the way. Wow. Um, very emotional and very well delivered on that element with Barrett and Dine. It's it's just crazy to see how they're handling the sequences here. This is one of my favorite parts of the original game. So it's near and dear to me to watch this sequence play out. It's just so crazy um, to see Dine in such a state so much more off the edge than he was before. Um, and he goes out in a final hailfire of bullets against Shinra instead of uh, allowing himself to finally be reunited with Eleanor, you know, on his own. He makes that choice to finally be with Eleanor because he can't hold Marlene ever again with his hands, which deeply moves Barrett too, because he's in the same position. God damn. Okay. Shinra's on the way. Cloud, Tifa, and Aerith is our default party trio again. Party selection is locked. Uh, I'll have to do another setup here with our group. So Barrett's going to have his moment to process Dine's passing. I definitely loved a lot of it, and feel conflicted on some other parts on how they've handled it, but I think it was definitely emotionally hard-hitting and, and very beautiful, and I think it still has that same level of effect that they're going for. Alright, I have changed my equipment so I'm ready for a fight, and I've collected my thoughts a little bit to talk about something specific about the Diane and Barrett sequence, because like I said, near and dear to my heart, this, this sequence and how it plays out, and Something I kind of love about the original game is Dine is the original boss of Corel Prison, and he's not like a random tied up prisoner in a chair. It's that's such a crazy sh like shift. So, Mr. Coates, Gus, genuinely ties this dude up in the chair, this crazy madman, and Barrett tries to reason with him, but he's he is crazy, which is as you'd expect, and then. You know, he learns that Marlene is still alive and that they could go back to her. And then he goes, you know, Barrett, you and I got to fight because, you know, Marlene want to see her mum, don't she? Like, he's literally that unhinged that he's like, he's got to reunite Marlene with his mother. That's And he's got to fight Barrett to get to her. Like, that's how he shifts his mentality. And that is how they fight. And then Barrett knocks some sense into him and he sees this sort of reason and he's like I can't hold Marlene with his hands no more and makes that choice that actual choice for himself to reunite himself with Eleanor and leaves this world and I just love how beautifully that sequence is handled in a very like less is more approach which I think is very important for certain elements and they went all out he's super unhinged and crazy he's got magnets in his arm where he's whacking around scrap metal it's it's so over the top and like i said i i'm i'm definitely torn i'm conflicted i'm not hating on it but i know that i've definitely harped on about it for too long 
Uh, so we'll move past it and, you know, continue for the rest of the game. But sometimes there's just these moments in the story that stand out more than the others. Like, it's funny, like, for, like I said, 95% of this game, I'm like, this is perfect. This is amazing. This is so, like, incredible. And I'm smiling. And then there's other parts that will stand out. And I'm like, this bothers me. And I have to talk about it. And it's, it's rare. It's few and far between. But when it happens, I have to be genuine and real about it. I, I am very conflicted on this uh, sequence. And with that, we can move on. <laughs> yeah. So Barrett's got dying on him at the moment. He's carrying that weight. Let's go and stop Shinra's attack. I guess they were, because they had eyes on us this whole time, you know, that they would know when to come in and strike. Pick it a beautiful moment. Dude, sea salt ice cream? <laughs> and here Yo. I thought that Gus guy was just yanking our chain. Same. That said, is it okay to let the director get involved like this? Were you going to stop him? Deploying riot control armor. All units are to pull back now. Well, have fun down there, boss man. What? Songs in the device? <laughs> oh no, Palmer, right. Duh. Why do I think like I thought boss of the Turks dude amazing okay it's Palmer that uh, obviously because he's been with them the whole time <laughs> dude they added a Palmer mech boss fight okay 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 that's good that's good I love that any opportunity to have more Palmer and they gave him a, a new boss fight Okay, that's funny. Uh, an Anarain Suppressor. Yeah, when they were talking about letting the boss go in, I was like, oh, Song's here. Leader of the Turks. I, it feels weird for him to be in that thing, but sure. But this makes an immense amount of sense, that it's Palmer. A riot control tank developed by the Advanced Weaponry Division. It is equipped with a highly advanced AI support system, allowing the mech to consistently operate at peak performance so long as its pilot is not completely incompetent. Good. Look at this thing wobbling. It, the fact that they've been able to create a Shinra weapon that has the personality of Palmer. Look at him, he's struggling. All right, landing, limit attacks or synergy abilities will flip it over. Attacking the cockpit while in its overturned state will deal significant damage. Landing several powerful offensive abilities while Palmer is taunting will pressure it. He's literally rolled himself over. Oh, I love this. Time bomb scatter. Damn, the movements of this thing is crazy. Okay. Oh, you're taunting. Neener, Neener, he's doing, dude. <laughs> yes, he's doing the taunting. Holy shit. Incredible. Jesus, got a stun ray. Look at the weapons on this thing. There you go, we hit him. There's the pressure. Amazing. Your 
Okay, this music. Incredible music. Dude, okay. Nice. Hell yeah. Dude, the music crazy. <laughs> Nina Nina, he's taunting me in the fucking thing itself. What the fuck? Okay, dude. Oh my god. Okay. You can do it. All set. I got it. I won't let you down. Go on. Jesus. Lightning. Yeah. Eradication Ray. I beg of you, shield them from harm. Music's so crazy. <laughs> Deal with that. It's your turn. I got Watch this. Let's dance, asshole. There you go. <laughs> Tifa and Cloud doing the limit breaks together. See, one second we're like, oh, okay, I don't know how to feel about that. And the other I'm like, okay, perfect choice for them to do this. We gotta go. They'll be on us any minute. They're on us now! Oh, uh, oh, I thought it was going to be Roche for a second. Let's push it over the red line. Dude, Dio personally is delivering it to us this time. Fear not, friend. Your chariot awaits. Dio? I've been using this to eavesdrop. Can never be too careful. Yo. But you were innocent. And I was wrong. By way of apology, I gift you this. <sighs> you will receive a proper burial, I promise you. Thanks. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! 
Um, is this not a bit much, sir? Hmm. The safety of my every guest is paramount. I don't know what happened in Midgar, but to me it matters not. <laughs> you are always welcome, my friend. <laughs> Tonally all over the place. Okay. Does anyone know how to drive this thing? Leave oh. it to me, lass. There it. He said he wanted me to live with the guilt. Well, we're here for you. <laughs> to help take the load off. <laughs> I mean it, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think you might. <laughs> Come on. I mean it, man. That's so good. Looks like this is goodbye, old buddy. I'm sorry, what? This is sick. I got this. All right. Oh, okay. Making your escape. Cool. Tonally so chaotic, right? You've got Barrett literally mourning the loss of his childhood friend, just like in absolute despair. And right next to him, you have Dio flexing his chest at the party. Like, it's so all over the place. They're like, here is your giant vehicle and my pecs! And, and Barra is distraught. Like, place in a time, guys. Let's spread that out a little bit. Let's maybe have the dying sequence play out first and let Barrett collect himself. Dio delivering the buggy in person instead of just a letter being like, ah, oh, I'm a busy man, sorry, here's a, here's a car. Have fun. Uh... I liked that they at least resolved it like that, so that's pretty cool. And Dio versus Rude. Um, yeah, just the like rapid fire sequence of events taking place can be a little bit confusing for what emotions you're supposed to be feeling. Like, I'm sad over Barrett and, you know, the loss of Dine here and what that means for Barrett's character and his growth. It's such an important part of his character and his story, you know, to be able to face his past and move forward from that. And then we've got Dio in his underwear. <laughs> All right. Dio has provided you with a means of escaping the chaos unfolding beneath the saucer. Give the Shinra forces a taste of their own ballistic medicine as you attempt to shake their pursuit. Let's go. Let's do this. I've got limited bullets this time. I didn't have limited bullets when we were in the minecart. I love that we got the buggy. That's going to make exploring the Corel region so much fun, dude. Like, so much fun. You want some? 
It's gonna save us a lot of time to Oh, we're driving this thing, okay. Eleanor, chill, will ya? You going down, punk? That's a very wobbly helicopter. A screaming room. Okay. Where's Roosh when you need him? We got bikes. Where is he? Let's do this. We're just running around in circles. This is so funny. We're literally just driving in a circle. Why does the chopper look like that, dude? Oh, fucking hell. The music stopped playing. Okay, it's just very s quiet, somber music. Okay, it's the Palmer. Okay, Palmer's back. <laughs> okay. Palmer's back. Jesus. Okay. Oh my god. Sure. <laughs> I just can't believe that there's a machine that just looks like Palmer. That's a bit tanky, isn't it? Gotcha. Maybe they should have someone stop us from driving around in circles. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, okay. Shit. That overcharge did pitiful damage to the weak point. I thought that that would have been a a surefire thing. The normal damage does um, enough. Oh god, come on. Uh, no, I missed it again. Okay. Cool. Yep. God, fucking. Almost done. There we go. Jesus. Palmer just wiping out his own team, dude. Sure. Oh yeah, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, get her off the get her off. This is just like advent children levels of their gymnastic ability. Oh 
my god. Oh, Yuffie's gonna throw up for sure after this. <laughs> she got she got moves that girl. Slow. I've seen worse. Shut up. The relationship with Barrett has changed. Okay. If we actually killed the weak point in time, it probably would have been better. Tell Marlene about what actually happened. Oh, he left the photo with her. God damn. Left the photo with him. Oh, ha ha ha. Ha. Why did you do that earlier? If you don't mind my saying, you're in an awfully good mood. Well, it's been productive. <laughs> he changed the pictures to just like <laughs> too much fun. <laughs> I'd hate to be uh, those people on the wanted poster. <clears throat> That is hilarious. You called, sir? What is the status of the ancient? We still have eyes on her. Is she looking for the promised land? We don't believe so. I see. Is she a higher priority than the Materia? Hmm. Not her so much as her birthright. It's a dream of mine. To see it with my own eyes. Understood. We'll step up surveillance. It's a dream of mine. How cute. What? Who are you? Really? Oh, come on. You know me. And I know you, Mr. President. You and your fears. <laughs> Still just a child. Aren't you? A pig-headed, pathetic, daddy-hating child. And under that bratish exterior, loneliness. I don't deny it. Why would I? It's brought me all this. Now that's the spirit I'm looking for. We really need more people like you. To give the world a shot in the arm. But what do you truly want? the same like visual effect as the whispers right but like what huh 
Huh? Oh, we're back. Ah! We're back at the end of the world. Okay. Jesus, they just won't stop. Sheesh! Give me a break. <laughs> Let's start this manhunt. Yo, okay. Everybody relax. <laughs> yep. On your way, old man. Oh my god. Oh, okay, let's chill out. So, Glenn is like some sort of weird whisper manifestation thing. Like he just pops up when he pleases and goes, woo, and then he disappears. Like he just, he's literally like pops up to make fun of Rufus and then just disappears. He's that's two for two now. He shows up and goes, <laughs> and then he disappears. I don't know what to make of that at the moment. Um, it's very strange, very weird, and it's uh, shenanigans. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. That completely threw me on the stuff that I wanted to talk about because I was wanting to talk about other things. Um, whoa, Rufus is very cool. I love that we're getting more of that with Rufus and Song. I like the expansion on their characters. The Glenn stuff is just super weird. Reeve having fun on his computer, like humming the the Kate Sith theme with a little Kate Sith in the background. I wonder what that's about. Why are they showing that to us? Who knows? Seriously, don't show that. Why are they showing that? Too early for that. It's them not showing restraint. God damn it. Uh, so changing the wanted posters is hilarious. So after the mess that happened at the gold saucer, they're like, okay, we'll try and throw them off their tail and make them look like other people instead, <laughs> which is very funny. Uh, so Reeves doing his own thing. there, having a bit of fun. Song is obviously in on that. I don't know what to make of the Glenn stuff. It's wild. Uh, I loved that we got to actually see the Barrett and Dine confrontation, and it was still was very emotional. That was great. The Palmer mech boss fight was great. We now have the buggy, which is amazing. That's going to make traversal uh, very, very fun indeed, especially around the Corel region as we go and do all of the world intel stuff finally, and uh, the other side quests in that region. So definitely things to do. And then, after all of that, they're gonna throw this into the mix and uh, take us back into Midgar, where you can see the tear in the fabric of reality in the sky there, the end of the world, as we're just chilling uh, in the alternate timeline, once again, because of course we are. Why not? Ms. Wait, Holy what the- a dancer, you know. For the longest time, she tried to keep her part-time work at the Honey Bee Inn a secret. That's what I was just going to say. For the children so she <laughs> can brighten their days. I don't know what we do without her. I was like, what the hell? Why is she dressed up? She was keeping that a secret, but there you go. Come on, everyone. It'll be okay. Now Let's she wears it to work. <laughs> For the longest time, she tried And then to she's trying to cheer everybody up. Uh, by doing honeybee dances. Okay, wild. Uh, we will be walking around Midgar next time. It's time we bring this episode to a close. Uh, thank you so very much for joining me today for another episode of some crazy Final Fantasy VII things. Um, such an interestingly conflicting chapter we're playing right now. And I can't wait to only see that continue as we progress through the story. Uh, thank you so very much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time.